Hello, a very, very warm welcome back to you to Women of the Future. This is episode four of what is proving to be an extremely exciting series for women all across the globe because we're looking at subjects that we hope will be of universal appeal because that is how it touches our hearts. Today's topic is entitled Accumulating Enough Inner Power. As you know, you need something within you to face whatever life throws at you. And so we want to look at what that is, where you get it, and how you keep it to make yourself strong and resilient. Sister Denise, thank you so much for joining us. It's great to have you back. Thank you. I'm sure the audience is really looking forward to what you have to say on the subject. Accumulating enough inner power. Sister Denise, um, this analogy comes to mind. When my car uh, tank is empty, my petrol tank is empty, I go to the garage to fill it. Okay? Um, we are aware, and almost everyone watching you is aware, that if you're short on power, you've got to go uh, get power from somewhere. And what we do is that we look to people and Mother Nature and our jobs and um, even our pets uh, to love us because we think that gives us power to face the days that come. But uh, how does one accumulate power and where does one accumulate power from? I think one thing to bear in mind in the question of power, um, why does a person overreact? Why does a person uh, behave badly? Why does a person lose their cool? How does a person behave when they're really running on empty, it's in general badly. So what I would like to communicate is that when people behave badly, it's not because they're bad, it's because they're weak. And when people behave well, it's not because they're good, it's because they're strong or they're in their power. When we are running on empty, feeling low, behaving badly, um, we will think, and other people will think about us, that we're bad, that we're not okay, that we are, um, you know, we start to doubt ourselves, our validity as people. Uh, and we won't necessarily pick up that all that's happening is, I'm low on my spiritual energy, and so I have to fill up. You see, when your car is empty, it won't go. We will go, but we'll go negative. Ah. You see, when we're full, we go, we go positive. So uh, it's sort of an applicable um, analogy only to some extent, because we will go, no doubt, but um, this is why accumulating power is important. Where do we go? Uh, well, we have to go to a non-earthly source. Um, so when we go to people, to places, to pets, to things, to jobs, to whatever, we get a temporary boost. But um, it, it gets used very, very quickly. And um, and we don't know any other way, so we have to really be informed that when you're bad, it doesn't mean you're bad, it means you're weak. When you're good, it doesn't mean you're good, it means that, you know, you're in your power. Things are going well for you, you've done good karma, whatever, whatever. So, getting power, you have to get inside and you have to go beyond because the source, the force, <laughs> the light, the energy doesn't come from down here, it comes from out there. And therefore we need to learn exactly how to disconnect from this and here in order to be able to shift to the dimension or the level where you can connect to the source. Is it Denise, you make all of that sound so 
beautiful and so obvious and yet to most people watching you most of the ladies watching you it's not is it um and what comes to mind as you speaking about god is that when people present themselves to god it's usually to ask him something i want this i want this i'm suffering i'm not okay uh, our list is long as far as god is concerned uh, but yet um many have the question does god listen to what i'm saying and but what you're talking about accumulating from god is rather different from the relationship that most people have with god absolutely how do I you um um explain to us uh, how you relate to god that's different do you ever ask him for anything if when people go to god saying oh god will you sort out this problem will you fix my husband will you <laughs> deal with my health you know and god will say you do it you know and then you say how he'll say look it up google it whatever <laughs> but um is a, a not understanding the function of god and in a way sometimes you may go to a friend or a higher authority or whatever sort out my problem how often do parents of a drug addicted child go to the rehabilitation center drop off the child and say give him back to me in a month fixed that's the cultural attitude we have and what the society doesn't get is a drug addicted child is a family problem the whole family needs to go to get rehabilitated you know uh, but it no it's so and so it's somebody this is the problem i'm not the problem you know whereas i think that god is very intelligent and the way that god relates to us is to oblige us almost to force us to take responsibility for our actions and their consequences so the problem that we have which we don't realize which i think is the importance of god is that god will inform us that hey humans you have lost power and because of that you have started doing activity which is mutually destructive self destructive and destructive of your habitat all of this is because you have no power so our our subject today is accumulating enough power enough for what how do you measure that you know as in many of the programs that we're doing it's really about rethinking everything so here's rethinking our relationship with our goodness and badness uh and re uh defining it as our being strong versus being weak rather than being good versus being bad that's the first thing so if i do something bad is because i'm weak If I do something good is when I'm strong. So turning within learning how to connect with the supreme being and taking power taking light and using that to be able to do the right thing. That's really what it's about. Now sister Denise you have to present yourself to the source. in order to accumulate power. Mm. Um and um for many women listening to you right now, um spirituality is something that um they've um been interested in, um you know, touched upon, meditated a bit, done a bit of this, done a bit of that uh, because there's an instinctive um attraction yeah. uh for women and spirituality. There's a definite link globally. So how does a woman who understands that within her psyche uh, she is in need of um of power um and she is aware of her emptiness she is aware of um your you know the beep sound that your cell phone makes when it's about to go flat your own battery needing to be recharged um explain to us um in a manner that's um 
you know, easy for our ladies to understand how does she present herself to God. I can't imagine you sitting on your couch saying, God, you listening? I need some power. Thanks. Well, you, you might well start like that. Start like that. Yes, as, as, well. as, as gross as that. You've okay. got to start but somewhere. Don't you, um, don't you have to do something to, to, to get it? I think what works is to admit, God, I, um, I really have lost control of myself, my life. Um, I'm listening. You tell me. So okay. rather than just giving orders to God, say, okay, no, nothing's working, I'm listening. And it's really a, a sort of an act of humility, an act of almost contrition where you say, I just don't know uh, what I'm doing anymore, um, I'm listening. Don't you have to have a relationship with someone before you can ask such a question? Because it's very intimate. Well, that's why it really takes almost like a desperation for a person to say, nothing's working anymore, I'm listening. You know, okay, it's really so an act of humility. So, y so desperation is a good thing because then you can use it to your advantage? Well, you can. Okay, so you talking about people who've hit rock bottom. Actually, when people have hit rock bottom and there's nowhere further down to go, the only way is up. And uh, that may be the time where you've tried everything, that may be the first time that you say, oh God, you know. And not like, oh God, as a desperate, in a negative sense, but oh God, as, okay, um, I'm listening, I'm turning to you, um, help or something like that. But I mean, there's a lot of people who are not going to go to a, a state of desperation, but it, it may be, okay, let me just be quiet and let me try and listen. Sometimes people use the term the universe, you know. What is the universe going to tell me? Well, the universe is a bunch of space with some stars and planets and black holes and whatnot, which doesn't really talk. But I think what people are referring to when they use that term is the the intelligence that's out there that's not a human. You see, because we cannot, as humans, take each other out of the human predicament. We hmm. cannot. A lot of people don't know that, Sister Denise, because we use each other um, as our resources. Well, crutches, you can say. Resources, crutches, okay. <laughs> uh, and so we don't concern ourselves as to whether that person's got enough to give us. We go and take because we know we're empty. If I'm empty and you're empty and I take from you and you expect to get from me, you know, two empty boxes cannot fill each other. True. You know, there isn't anything left in a way, here, we have to go beyond, we have to go out there, because it, it, in so many ways it's spent. Uh, the fertility of the earth is spent, the creativity spent, um, uh, power to sort of lift a community out of its difficulties, um, you know, the the political powers, the religious powers, somehow everyone is um, feeling that they just don't work anymore, they're empty, um, only really as a last resort we say, okay, uh, if there is anybody out there, um, I'm approaching you. But again, you know, the silence really helps because you can hear in the silence. So practicing silence is good. Which a lot of people find impossible to do because of the mental noise. So Denise, before you answer that, I want to ask you, how do you know whether God is listening? If you set um, conditions you'll be met with this. It has to be unconditional surrender, as it were. Unconditional surrender. 
What is your definition of that? When you have totally set aside your ego. Oh, but we love our egos, says the Denise. We don't easily let go of that. It's our favorite non-friend. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Of course it is, but you know, you will hold on to it until it has totally failed you. And then only unconditional surrender is possible. This is why it connects with the idea of pain that we were talking about earlier. When pain is really intense and there's nothing you can do and nothing works, that can also bring you to a point of unconditional surrender. And a person who does this and takes this, really it's a very courageous step to stand in front of God or however you want to call this and say, you know, I give up, you take over. That's really the signal from a human being that God waits for before he can say, okay, um, okay, this is what you should do, or this is, or, or give you the experience of that support, that love, and that presence. How does uh, God communicate, Mr. Denise? What, um, what is his language? Well, I think it's the language of feeling. That is so beautiful, the language of feelings. Mm. So there's no, um, you know, flash of lightning, crack of thunder, nothing as obvious as that. Well, sometimes there is, <laughs> but you know, I think that if you just sort of lay yourself out and say, okay, I surrender, um, very many people have reported that at such a time when it's really unconditional surrender, they feel this huge wave of peace uh, and you say, what was that, you know? Or a huge wave of love or something that lets you know in no uncertain terms, but yet wordless, that there's somebody there for you and that um, there's accessibility, you see. And, and very often a person will experience that and it's totally unforgettable and then it'll be gone, because it doesn't stay forever. Um, it sets up a longing. I've got to have that again. Mm. I've got to find that source, you see. And that may set a person on a quest to experience the link. And then, you know, the question of meditation, practice of silence, surrender, all of these different ways will start to come into your mind that, you know, they try this, try this, try this. And of course, meditation is really a very important part of that because it's a kind of a communing with that source in stillness, uh, keeping that in your heart, keeping your heart clean, uh, so that God will communicate with you through very, very subtle means. And when you're listening and kind of following, uh, it takes you down the road that you need to be going on. But it is very easy to lose track, deviate, get back into your ego or whatever. So it is really very subtle. God's responsibility to his children is to give them power at their time of need. God's promise rather than responsibility. So God's promise is come to me and I will give you everything you need. Sure. That's, that's a, a beautiful thing to hold in one's heart, but uh, the problem is we don't. Is it Denise, once uh, one has accumulated that amount of power from God, even if it's just the little that you just described, which is a lot, but just that much. How then do you ensure on a day-to-day -day basis that you're not leaking? Well, this is what happens to most people. It comes in and goes right out again, and then people will get annoyed with it rather than look for closing the leaks. Because where does the leakage come? is uh, you start to get arrogant, it'll all go away, or cocky, or um, you, you greedy, or any little thing. You see, because God is so subtle that as soon as you go off track, you lose everything. 
And if you want to come back on track, you have to sort of notice what you did that messed it up and stop doing that. What causes us to lose our power? Is it because power, s power of the spirit, is intangible and we don't realize that we're losing it? Are we, are we that careless or are we that ignorant? Well, I think we definitely are that careless, we're definitely that ignorant and we're not particularly subtle. No, we're not subtle. Our God is extraordinarily subtle. And so I, I think we have to be very, very patient with ourselves. Uh, and I think that there's nothing wrong with getting a little bit, losing everything, and then putting two and two together and seeing, okay, I lost it all because I didn't look after it. Or I lost it all because I started having negative thoughts. Or I lost it all because I got distracted, attracted, or something like this. And you gradually pick up and get the point that if you want this, and then you have to pursue it correctly and carefully. And this is why I think also God will um, uh, present to us as our teacher. And, okay, you, you have to um, be with me, you have to come to me, you have to sit with me, you have to be in my remembrance and do everything in this way in order to keep me close. And when you move away from that, God also moves away from you. You gradually get to see what brings him close, what brings him far. If you're living your life trying to resource yourself from people, places, things, pets, jobs, whatever, uh, you'll get a little bit and then you go back to emptiness. Uh, you start to bring God into your life gradually and you start to have a, a source which is um, can be accumulated, which you have to take care of, and which is not a terrestrial thing, then you really start to come close to yourself as well. Um, you were saying that God is the source of power, actually the only legitimate source from what I, I hear. Well, um, it's the source for your soul. Mm. And if you try to feed or fill the hole in your soul with drugs or alcohol or sex or um, money or whatever the thing is, it won't fill it. The hole just keeps getting bigger. When you start mm. to fill that with God, with divine qualities, whatever, um, there you start to be getting full. Mm. Is it Denise, there are uh, our sisters listening to you right now who fear and feel in their heart that they are carrying problems that are insurmountable and nothing and no one can help them. Um, there are mm, hundreds of thousands of ladies across the globe who are on the brink of dot, 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 right. on, a, on, on a precipice. and. Um, um, my heart feels a lot of mercy for such mm -hmm. sisters. Uh, wh what would you say to, to the many who are listening to you? Well, there are a number of things that we learn in Brahma Kumaris about all this. First thing we learn is just give it to God. Anything that's bigger than you, unsurmountable, is not too big for God. Okay, it's surmountable because you're human, but it's not, it's not so insurmountable because it's God. Yeah, and you know, your problem is very little in God's eyes. In your eyes, it's massive, you see. But, in, but a God will say, well, don't worry about it, let it go, you know. You, you have to sit with yourself and define your problem. You know, my problem is I don't have enough money. Very many people, it's an insurmountable problem. I'm in debt, I don't have enough money. Okay, surrender it to God. There is nothing else you can do because otherwise you come in the clutches of some human, you know. Uh, surrender your life to God. Surrender your mind to God. Surrender your negative thoughts to God. You see, it's like as an act. You just keep giving it. Because as long as you 
holding on to the worry about it, you're paralyzed. Mm, it's a very descriptive uh, metaphor. Um, worry paralyzes the soul. There's a saying, there is no worse disease than worry, mm. and there is no better medicine than happiness. Mm. That is lovely. Yeah. Uh, yes, Sister Denise, I think on that note, we have to bring today's episode to uh, close. Worry paralyzes you. That's an interesting uh, um, expression, and I hope it's something that you are able to appreciate and understand. Sister Denise has shared a lot today on what it means to accumulate power, and I think the deepest message is that um, we have a very strong tendency to look to humans and animals and things and Mother Nature for our sustenance, but um, they and those things can give us so much and nothing more. And the only legitimate source of power is God. But Sister Denise has also shared how one goes to God, how you communicate with Him. And also Sister Denise's message is how to look after that power. Very powerful uh, message, very powerful talk. And we do hope to see you again soon. Thank you for joining us and goodbye.